Some episodes just need to be brought to you like a boss. Like a boss 25. Today we're doing a first look on the Citadel Boss 25 shotgun, which for all of you internet range safety officers out there is unloaded. And I'll even show clear here. This is an AR style semi-auto shotgun that was sent to me to check out from Rainier Arms. So disclosure right up front, this is a temporary media sample. It's not my gun to keep. Uh, in fact, as soon as I'm done doing this video, it's gonna be on its way back to Rainier for other demo purposes and stuff like that. So no uh, paid, nothing like that. Just simply a gun for me to check out. My name is Dave Tim from Guns and Tactics. Thank you guys very much for spending a few minutes of your day checking out this new shotgun. And I have to say, when I first heard about it, I didn't exactly know what to expect. Now, right up front, it is an AR style semi-auto shotgun. So it definitely resembles an AR large frame rifle, except for it does have proprietary receivers. You're not gonna be putting your AR-308 upper or lower on here or anything like that. And the receiver to handguard is also proprietary as well. That being said, uh, it actually was a pretty fun gun to shoot and it is relatively priced and the reason why these are growing in popularity is because number one they are still available even as of when i'm making this and number two the price is actually pretty attractive street price is right around 500 dollars. of course i would recommend getting it from rainier arms you can check them out in the description below they are available from other retailers as well but believe it or not you probably pay more so now that we have price and disclosure and stuff out of the way let's get right to it First things first, it did shoot just fine for me. I did have one hiccup when I first got it, and that is the gun started to have uh, a little bit of sluggish reaction. And the guy that sent it to me was right up front and said, hey, we just shot it a whole bunch. I didn't clean it. I don't think it's been lubed. Check it out. So I wiped off the gunk and put a little lube on and it started to run fine. Now I tested it with all sorts of ammo that I had. I had low recoil buckshot, which you can definitely see that there is a difference in ejection pattern versus the low recoil buckshot versus standard like federal LE flight control buckshot. Uh, anything that is decent power cycles through just fine. Some of the really low power, low recoil stuff, uh, it would be a little bit more sluggish or even some of the bird shot you could definitely, you know, feel a difference, but it ran just fine. As far as accuracy goes, it's a shotgun and I was just shooting it with the provided iron sights, but I had no problem hitting my piece of steel at 50 yards with slugs. And honestly, for a shotgun, I would consider that great. If I put a red dot on it, I'm sure I could get better. Uh, the one thing I wanted to do, and unfortunately I am running into a time crunch with this particular gun, is I did want to put a small LPVO on it and actually get some groups at 100 yards with slugs, but I think it would actually shoot decent based on what I was seeing on my group with the steel at 50 yards. Uh, now as far as the machine itself, uh, we'll just start with the back. It does have a fixed AR style stock. It is adjustable for height. That's what this adjustment is for here. Uh, it does not unfortunately adjust for length of pull. It is basically a fixed stock. And one of the things I did notice is that on one of the days that I shot it, I uh, didn't shave for like a week and occasionally, you know, like your beard hair would, uh, I don't know what beard hair, I don't, I don't know what the technical term is, but that would get caught right here and sometimes pinch a little bit. So just make sure that your cheek weld is right on the cheek piece for optimal comfort. Moving forward, it does take AR grips and it does have a single side AR style selector. So if you're familiar with AR controls, you'll find this very, very comfortable. Even the bolt catch bolt release is similar. It's not an AR per se, but it does have an AR style bolt catch bolt release. And then on the other side, it does have an AR style mag magazine release. We'll talk about magazines here in just a moment. Upper and receiver again are proprietary and then they do match the profile of this handguard which does have a couple of M-lock slots up front. These slots down here on the sides are actually just ventilation and then it does have keymot on the bottom with a small Picatinny section on the bottom which is then mirrored on the top for mounting sights. Now one thing that I would love to see is just pick one or the other. Uh, being that they have some M-lock just stick with M-Lock and don't do this half and half thing. I would just rather have M-Lock here and that way you could add a vertical grip, uh, grip panel, something like that. But I do like how they do give you the Picatinny side up there so you could add a backup sight and then you do have a couple of M-Lock slots so you can add things like a light. It does have a top Picatinny rail that does continue on to the upper receiver. So if you did want to mount any optics or accessories, you certainly could do that. And then moving forward to the barrel, 
It is a threaded barrel. It does come with chokes. I ran it mainly with this compensator, but it is threaded and there are different chokes available. So if you pattern your shotgun and you find that maybe a modified choke or something like that would work really well for you, it does come with different chokes and it is threaded, which is nice. So I thought that was a cool touch and it does have a shroud here. Uh, just, I think it's more for kind of looks. I'm not big into the shrouds. I would just rather have the barrel, but I believe that it might also retain some of the operating system. Now, speaking of operating system, it does have a right side charging handle to manipulate the gun. Uh, if you're familiar with pretty much any other semi-auto style shotgun, that is pretty standard to have to manipulate it that way. Would it be kind of cool to have a left side? Yeah, so maybe in like version 2.0, they might be able to have a reversible, but uh, being that it is the AR style controls with everything else, uh, I thought it would be kind of cool to have a left side, but by no means a, a deal killer or anything like that. It was super easy to manipulate, and in fact, uh, manipulating it actually is kind of slick just to be able to lock the bolt back to the rear using the bolt catch and then the charging handle, so no issue with that whatsoever. All right, down in dirty specs, you guys know that I'm not a dirty spec reader, but we have an 18 and three quarter inch barrel with the choke option, which we talked about earlier. Total weight is right about eight pounds. Length of pull is right around 14 inches. For more information on specs, go ahead and check out uh, Rainier Arms. They have the full specs on there. Again, I'm not a big one on just reading specs. Magazines. It does come with two five round magazines. Now, 10 round magazines are available. However, I did not have any to try. And I will say, the one thing that I would love to see with this is like some 15 plus round mags. And then if they could make sure that this thing could run with some of the lower recoil loads, I think even some of the three gunners, uh, as far as like an entry level open type shotgun might take interest. But magazines are gonna be the big thing. And I had zero issues with magazines. I don't think any of the stoppages I had were mag related. Again, the only stoppages that I had, I believe were due to dirt and a lack of lubrication. And that even then was only with the light recoiling stuff. Once I put full power stuff, even when it was dirty and dry, the gun ran. But once I added some lubrication, cleaned it out a little bit, again, no issues whatsoever. Now, one question I had going into this was regarding the trigger. Being that it is an AR style trigger, could you drop any AR trigger in? And the answer is no. It is a proprietary hammer, which you can probably see better on this side, that once we drop the hammer, you can see it's a much bigger, heavier hammer than it would be on a standard AR. Now, as far as trigger pull weight, uh, mine is right around that six and a half, seven pounds, but it's not bad. It doesn't have a ton of creep or grit, but it's just a heavier trigger because again, we have probably a pretty powerful hammer spring in there and working that heavier hammer. But it's not a bad trigger. Now, one of the other cool things with this gun that you can't do with an AR is right now I've pressed the trigger and the hammer's down, but check this out. I can manipulate the gun to safe. Can't do that on a standard AR trigger. So even if you're concerned about whether uh, the gun is cocked or not, you can always manipulate this particular firearm into safe, which is kind of neat. Now, just another little note, if you do have it in safe with the hammer cocked, you can't manipulate the charging handle. So you would then have to manipulate the gun to fire clear it, do whatever, and then you can go ahead and put it back on safe. So just a couple little things that I observed that I thought were unique to this. Now, my particular gun is in, they call it tactical gray, which I do like gray. However, it is available in other colors as well, and I know there are some Cerakote shops doing some really cool stuff with them as well. But overall, I found the gun really comfortable to shoot. I put uh, probably 150 to 200-ish various rounds at the range. Again, just kind of running some drills, kind of shooting it for fun to kind of get a feel for the shotgun. I didn't find recoil was obnoxious. Obviously, you'd feel it if you're shooting the higher power loads versus the low recoil stuff, but I thought it handled recoil pretty well, all things considered for a semi-auto shotgun. Now, is it as smooth as like a tuned custom competition semi-auto shotgun? No, but for the price point that you're getting, I thought that the recoil was very manageable. So that's gonna do it for this first look. If you have any questions about this or anything else firearms related, go ahead and drop a question in the comment section below or better yet, send an email to the email address shown below that is the qa guns and tactics.com to get submitted to our monthly qa series let me know what you think of this shotgun and if you're looking for an ar style semi-auto shotgun that will not break the bank i think you should definitely check out one of these citadel boss 25 semi-auto shotguns it was actually pretty fun to shoot if you guys like the content please like share and subscribe check us out online in our social media outlets thank you guys very much for watching and have a great day we work really hard to make content that we hope you as a shooter would enjoy. Subscribe to our channel, check out our featured videos and playlists, and if you have a question firearms related, 
go ahead and send an email to the address shown on the screen to be entered into our monthly QA series.